Okay, well, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, I believe that is my first successful stream that I have scheduled and not had to create a new video uh, in order to get started. Okay, well, so um, I've been noticing in the comments lately, um, uh, several people are asking about a uh, or my bell uh, because, well, several years ago I was using a regular default contrabassoon bell, and then all of a sudden I switched to a different bell. Um, and I have talked about some of the bells and some of the some of the other videos kind of sporadically, um, but I figured it was a good time to to make one video kind of focused on the bells. Um, so uh, I'm going to kind of go in order from um, kind of higher down to lower. So this is my contrabassoon. And you can see right now, I do not have a bell on it. Uh, I'll get into that in just a second. Um, but, uh, so this is a kind of a standard, these days, a standard low B flat model contrabassoon. Um, but historically, uh, contrabassoons often only went down to C, or maybe they had a C bell that you could change out for a low B flat or even a low A bell. So, the last time I disassembled my contrabassoon, I ended up trying out a C bell on it. Now, I, this, so this is uh, just what I 3D printed, and it would go right here, and you would remove all of this. Um, now, I can't put it on right now because it requires the complete disassembly of the upper U-bend and these brackets, and that's a pretty uh, extensive job. But I do have some pictures. Let's... So here is, um, so here's a picture from when I actually used this bell in performance with the Tulsa Symphony. Um, we were doing two concerts in a row that didn't require anything below a, um, a, uh, a, low, uh, a low C. Uh, this was from the Britain War Re Requiem. Uh, so I figured that would be a good time to try it out. It works well enough. Um, I had heard some some friends of mine, some contrabassoon colleagues, say that they tried a low C bell and it really improved their instrument. Um, and I believe them uh, in in their situation with their contrabassoon. On my contrabassoon, I didn't notice any real benefit to the rest of the range, and certainly not enough to give up two whole semitones at the bottom. Uh, now while I was on the, uh, while I was doing that, just on a lark, I also tried kind of an English horn style bell. This is just a different shape of low C, so this is kind of bassoon style, this is kind of English horn style. Uh, now this one was not successful. Uh, the, uh, the extra uh, long story short, it ended up significantly sharp. Um, the low C, that is. Okay, so let's move on to the low B flat, uh, kind of the default bell. And the bell you all are used to, or if you're a contrabassoonist, looks kind of like this. Now, what you may or may not know, if, you, if you've been following this channel, you probably know this already. Um, but these are not special, special manufactured contrabassoon bells. These are actually alto sax bells. Um, uh, bassoon companies buy these uh, from saxophone manufacturers before the tone hole, uh, the, the, the low B natural tone hole has been added, and they just modify them for, the, for their purposes to fit on contrabassoon. And I have another one over here. This is 
when um, uh, Chip Owen from the the Fox uh, Fox bassoon. I mean, he's retired now, but he used to work for Fox. He was their contra bassoon guru. He uh, he sold me this one. Um, it didn't meet Fox's standards, so they couldn't use it on their contra bassoon. So he sold it to me for a pretty pretty decent price. Um, I had originally planned on using this to make a new bell, uh, but I ended up not not doing that, or at least not yet. Okay, so I think it's obvious why I would want to make different bells. A low A bell, uh, a mute bell, there's all sorts of um, possibilities, um, but the The, um, the difficulty is the contrabassoon bell is not designed to be easily removable. So if we look at the instrument, the, the bell is attached with these two uh, sheet metal screws. And those go through the wood of the instrument. Now what that means is that every time you need to remove the bell, you're uh, wearing out those threads through the wood of the instrument. And that's, uh, that's something I wanted to avoid. So what I ended up doing is I removed this bell, the B-flat bell that came with it, and I replaced it with a adapter. It looks kind of like this. That way I can leave this adapter in place permanently um, and attach other bells to that. Rather than having to screw in and out of the wood, I'm screwing into the adapter, um, which I can always make more adapters if it wears out. So here, some pictures from the process of making that adapter. So here we have just a big solid sunk chunk of steel that I needed to use as the mandrel. I then turned that down to the, uh, the necessary shape. And you can see here, there's kind of a double taper. There's a straight part, a kind of a rapid taper, a shallow taper, and then another straight part. And the reason why is because what I was gonna do is take some brass tubing and um, uh, use a hydraulic press to force it on this mandrel and expand out to the desired shape. Um, so here's a picture of that on the hydraulic press. Um, and then the end result is a piece of brass tubing that fits the new mandrel. The hard part's getting it off of the mandrel. And then you can cut it to length, uh, cut off the, the straight parts on the, the top and the bottom. And then you have a, a brass adapter shaped identically to the taper and dimensions of the, uh, the B flat bell that came on there. And, it's and it is important that it's the same taper, the same shape, and that it's a good fit. Uh, if it's loose, it's going to, um, I can't change, I can't easily change the, uh, the contrabassoon or the bell receiver. And if it's too loose, uh, it'll, it'll uh, wall around. And if it's too tight, I'm gonna possibly even damage the instrument getting it in.
Okay, so now that I have a new bell adapter, uh, just so now that I have a new bell adapter, what sort of bells am I going to put on there? Well, the first bell, and the one that uh, some of you have noticed uh, most, is this bell here. And this is probably the most boring bell. This is um, designed as close as I was able to uh, with, the, with 3D printing and with the uh, uh, dimensions I was able to get. It's designed to... Uh, be as similar as possible in bore to the original bell. Uh, it's obviously a thicker wall, uh, has a thicker wall because it needs that. Uh, you can't, you can't really 3D print uh, half, one half millimeter in PLA and expect it to be, uh, expect it to, to have any kind of uh, strength. And so that bell goes on there. Just like that. Well, like I said, it's a snug fit, but you want it to be snug. And then I would secure that in place with some thumb screws. So this is kind of my default bell now. This is the one that I, I leave on, that I bring to gigs, unless I have a good reason to bring anything else. Um, it works well. It plays as... I haven't noticed any big difference between this bell and this bell, which means it also has the drawbacks of this bell, which I'll get to in a moment. So, moving on from that, what, what might some other bell ideas be? Well, one of my first thoughts, and actually the reason I originally bought this bell, is um, the low B flat on this instrument is quite sharp. Like, like without doing anything like 35 cents. Now, you can bring it down, um, and honestly, in a lot of situations, you know, fast technical stuff, um, you, um, uh, if the low B flat's a little bit sharp, no one except maybe the tuba player is going to notice. Um, but there are other situations where having a secure, in-tune B flat is critical. So here is a situation I was presented with uh, the last time the Tulsa Symphony played um, Symphonic Metamorphosis uh, by, by Hindemith. So here we have a very long sustained piano low B flat on contrabassoon and it's quite exposed. Uh, the tuba's playing an octave higher, the basses are playing an octave higher, um, but you really wouldn't want to have to be, I mean, the, the only way I was able to play this passage as written, because it's eight bars of this, was to circular breathe. So I really didn't have, want to be fighting the intonation. So in the pat, so when I performed this, I did this. A very short extension just enough to, to lower that pitch so it's comfortably in tune. But what I really wanted was a low B flat bell that was in tune. So that's why I made this one. Here, let me take this one off real quick. Ugh.
The only goal here was, you notice it's a good deal longer, uh, was to bring that low B flat into tune. So you might think that I would just use this bell now. Um, and that was my initial thought when I was, you know, buying that metal bell and making the, the in tune low B flat bell, is that that would just become my new bell. Uh, but what I discovered is that that extra length pretty, pretty strongly negatively impacts low C. Um, which is why this did not become my default low, uh, low B flat bell. However, I have found another solution, and we'll get into that in a second. All right, so if we keep going down, anyway, so uh, going down from low B flat, we have the low A. Now the initial are in the past, or well, let's, if you go back to my earlier extension video, you'd see a low A extension that looks like this. It stays in the bell with friction and lowers it down to, to low A. Now, this works, and I've made many of these over the years. I usually end up giving them away to other contrabassoonists when I see them. Uh, I used to keep one in my case uh, by default, um, but there's, there's a lot to be desired here. So you might notice that the extension is facing downwards. I'm like a bassoon extension where it can be, it's being held in place by gravity. Um, the, the low A extension on a contrabassoon is being held in place by friction. And that is dangerous. Um, I discovered that the hard way when I was uh, recording uh, a, a piece for wind ensemble with, by a composer named Keen Southern. Now, he, sh he sent me the score in advance, uh, since I would was only going to be able to be there for one rehearsal. And looking, and when I saw this part, and looking at the piano part, I asked him, is that the octave he meant, or did he want it an octave lower? And he confirmed that actually he did want it the, the lower octave, he just didn't think he could write that. So I dutifully brought my low A extension, Sorry, let me go back. I dutifully brought my low A extension. I played the piano low A. And then right in this rest here, as the entire ensemble is quiet, the extension fell out. And, you know, thankfully, they needed to re-record that take anyway. So it wasn't entirely my fault that they had to re-record a section. But it was still very embarrassing. So, obviously, what I want is a low A bell to go along with my uh, adapter here. And this is what I came up with. Now, you might be thinking that this is a very odd shape. Um, and I would agree, but there's a reason for that. Let me get it into place and... Hopefully, it'll be a little more obvious why. Okay. Now, this shape here, this kind of large radius bend that comes back on in on itself, this is for better uh, intonation and resistance. Uh, woodwind instruments, in general, don't like really tight bends. Um, so with 3D printing, there's no limitation on kind of the geometry you have access to. So that's why I did this double-backed bend. Now, and the reason I bent it upwards, instead of just being a long um, bell that goes straight down, actually, here. 
this was the the prototype I made just to test the overall dimensions you can see it just goes straight down I was using this to test the tone hole position and the overall length um, but I want to eventually add key work here and by wrapping this up I've brought the uh, I've made it possible to add a low A key here that's entirely attached to the bell so I don't have to modify the instrument itself at all and I can give you a better idea of what that looks like uh, now I haven't made the key work yet So this is what um, it'll look like eventually. Have a open pad here, a rod from here to here, a, real, a little short rod here, and then a key that wraps up here. So I can play that with my pinky and play low A just like uh, any other note with this bell attached. Now, embarrassingly, uh, so, while, while I'm working on that key work, um, I still want to use this, I st I've still been using this spell to play low A's, and what I've done is make a plug for that, something that can be um, placed and removed manually. But, embarrassingly, I seem to have left that at my last gig. Uh, where we were doing a Respighi arrangement of a, uh, a Bach uh, piece of some sort that had a nice big A in it. And the conductor kept asking for more from the basses. So I just decided to take it down an octave and I didn't get fired. So I guess it was okay. Um... So, in order to play the low A without that plug, I'm going to have to do some contortion. And of course, eventually I'll be able to play that with uh, just my pinky instead of having to take my shoe off and using my foot. Now, let me go ahead and get this off real quick. Here is a slightly a later revision of the low A bell. Uh, this one, this was, I had intended for this to be the finished, the finished version. Um, you can see I've already installed some posts here. Um, but this was before I, this is while I was still printing in PLA primarily. And as you may have seen in the last video, um, I've become, I've become fully convinced that ABS is the way to go for, uh, musical instruments for, for a lot of reasons. So I'm going to end up reprinting an A-Bell in ABS, uh, and that's going to be the one that eventually has the key work on it. The, the gray one, that's going to be my, um, uh, that's going to be my, uh, my low A for the time being. Okay. Let me see if there's any, anything I missed that I wanted to show you all. Oh. This is just kind of fun. Uh, a friend of mine wrote a piece of music and he follows me on Facebook. So he saw my extension shenanigans and he ended up writing a contrabassoon part that has more low A's than I had. It's definitely the highest low A per note uh, 
ratio of anything in the contrabassoon repertoire. Uh, and we actually recorded this earlier, a uh, couple months ago. Um, so that, that was a fun experience. Showing up to a gig or to a recording session with a whole bunch of people uh, that I hadn't really worked with before and just bringing out this weird extension and playing a whole bunch of low A's. Okay, so going down a half step, we would have a low A flat extension. So this is the extension that I used, uh, that I made in my old video. Um, so you can see that it, I used PVC bins and then rested that on the ground and then a very short upward section. Now the downside of PVC bins is that they're actually really quite heavy. Um, so it's not a terror, it's not a great solution. If it's resting on the ground, it's not, if it's resting on the ground, you're, you still need to be careful. Um, but, um, I was really thankful once I started getting into 3D printing that I could replace some of these, some of this uh, stuff with uh, 3D printed parts, custom made for that purpose. Uh, now, why would you need a low A flat extension on contrabassoon? Well, oddly enough, low A flat is something I've I've probably used my low A flat extension in an orchestra gig just as often as my low A extension, and that's because of one single piece. Um, so the planets, the, the full instrumentation of the planets includes both a organ part and a celesta part. Now, usually, for, throughout the most of the piece, the, the two instruments don't play at the same time. So what tends to happen for pops concerts or with smaller orchestras is there's one keyboard player who plays both parts on a little uh, digital keyboard. But there's one section in Neptune. Let me pull that up. That has, well, I cut off the Celeste. There is Celeste playing here, um, or Celesta. And it has this kind of exposed pianissimo 32 foot low A flat. And I, I've played that at least four or five times on contrabassoon with a low A flat extension. Um, because, well, no other instrument can play down that down there. Okay. Maybe the tuba could play that note, but it would last like an eighth note. So where is my low A flat extension? Or my new low A flat extension? Well, I ended up deciding not to make one. I did try. To uh, redo my low A flat extension. So this is the original one. It was extremely heavy. And then this is the one I replaced it with, with this very tight uh, U-bend. Uh, it was very lightweight. This one was made out of PETG. Um, and it, it fit in just like my old low A extension. Um, but I, I found a better solution, which brings us to uh, another half step down uh, to low G. Now low G is, I was as I was looking through old pictures of, um, uh, that I thought you all might wanna see, I came across, I realized that low G, at least for me, has a surprisingly long history. So here is a picture.
from, this is probably 2006, um, of a extremely early and very bad low G extension. And over the years, I've upgraded that. So here, this is a piece we played in the Tulsa Symphony once. Um, this is from Michael Dougherty's uh, Route 66, or it was from Michael Dougherty's Route 66. Um, so here is, no, nope. sorry about this. Oh. Okay. So this is what I ended up using for that performance. However, as one does when you discover that your piece has a low G in it, uh, uh, Mr. Dougherty ended up uh, fixing that in later editions. So now if we look at this part, we can see that the contrabassoon is playing an octave below the second bassoon rather than an octave below the tuba which is what caused that low G in the first place. Uh, okay. So, um, eventually, my low G extension came to look like this. This is the extension from my our, uh, Unexplored Depths video. Once again, we have those very heavy um, PVC bins. Now, initially, I had thought about making it this similar to that A-flat extension I showed you with the really tight U-bend. And that design actually ended up getting, being used by the uh, San Francisco Symphony. So Stephen Bronstein is the, kind of the... Um, you know, one of one of America's preeminent contrabassoonists, and he plays with the um, the San Francisco Symphony, and their music director, uh, uh, Michael Tilson Thomas, or uh, handed out a piece of music that he had composed, and Stephen realized that it had a low G in it. He, ta he talked to the composer. He said, is, is this what you want? And, you know, the composer said, yeah, I understand that that's extreme. If you can get it, great. If not, it's not that big of a deal. So at least he had a, realist he had a realistic attitude about that note. He knew that it was beyond the, uh, the, uh, the range of a standard contrabassoon. But Stephen, uh, you know, if, if he wanted to play the note. So, I ended up sending him a custom low G extension, and he ended up using that in a performance. Now, you can see here that he was using his uh, low A, his, his heckle contrabassoon has a low A bell, or it has a interchangeable low B flat and low A bell. So, he was using this as an extension for the low um, for the low a bell so anyway I just thought anything I have to do that has remotely anything to do with Stephen Bronstein I'm gonna brag about it so there it is so but the reason you're here is you want to know about my low G extension that I surely have just hanging out over here and you would be right so here is my low G bell. Now, I mentioned before that I didn't end up making a low A flat bell. That's because I, had, I used, uh, I added tone holes here. So with this bell in place, I can play B flat, A, A flat, or G, depending on the needs of the piece. Let me put that in place. moment to uh... 
And here is what that looks like. So with no, with all these tone holes open, it'll play a low B flat. And then you can cover them one at a time. Now I'm, I'm gonna, So now we have low A. Low A flat. So this is my new low A flat extension too. And finally low G. Now, the big limitation uh, with this extension as it is now, and something I'm going to change uh, before I, when I reprint it in ABS, is these uh, tone, this tone hole plug design that I made uh, with a kind of a silicone gasket here that you kind of twist on. It, it just doesn't work very well. It's, it's very leaky, it's difficult to play softly. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna come up with something. Yeah, yeah. imagine that, someone trying to build a subcontra bassoon, right? Um, so I'm gonna come up with a better design for these tone hole plugs when I get around to reprinting this. Uh, here. So this, is what the G prototype looked like. Once again, using that, that reusing that tight bend and trying to tweak the tone hole positions and the overall length. And here, is how I ended up needing to print it. Now I'm gonna revise this, uh, this uh, how these parts are divided with some new uh, techniques that I've been using successfully on uh, 3D printing. But just to give you a rough idea of what a uh, involved project that was. Okay, now in the past, I kind of mentioned that low G extensions are in my old video, my subcontrabassoon unexplored depths part one, I mentioned that I felt like low G was pretty much the, the lowest practical extension. Um, and I, I still largely think that that's true, but You know, I'm not known for practicality. So, my low F extension, or my, sorry, F sharp is next. Now, my initial plan was to eventually, was to make a low F bell that goes along with my low G bell, or to um, an entirely separate low F bell from my low G bell. Um, and just for, um, uh, to remind you all, this is the low F sharp bell, or the low F sharp extension that I had made all those years ago. The low F sharp is oddly enough the only extension that I never used in performance. Um, but I mean, I still want it to ha have it as an option. 
uh, I decided that I didn't want an entirely separate low F sharp bell, or a low F bell for that matter. Um, instead, I decided to reuse my low G bell. Um, you may have noticed that I have two different colors here. And you might be wondering, uh, well, is there a reason, why is one a different color? They were the same color, but I redid this end bell because it is separately removable. And now I have my low F sharp. Now this is unlike, so everything else, all of the other bells are kind of thick walled, um, um, kind of robust uh, construction. This is actually just a single extrusion of PLA, or sorry, PETG. Uh, that's to make it as light as possible. This is, a, uh, this is the same material and construction method I use for my low A extensions um, that you can buy from uh, Nielsen Woodwinds. Um, but that just goes in place. It weighs almost nothing. And you can get a low F sharp. And uh, this one, once again, these tone hole plugs don't work terribly well, so it's a little difficult to get the low F sharp out. But I think we all, you all will agree that this is a much more elegant solution than my old extensions. Compact, uh, no taller than the, uh, the contra consumed by itself, um, lightweight. And I'm sure you all know what's coming next. Uh, my low F. Uh, actually, but before I show you my low F extension for my low G bell, here is the here is the original low F extension. Now you see it was resting on the ground, which gave it a lower overall height, but it also uh, had it overall less practical. My new low F extension is a little bit taller because the low G bell doesn't go all the way to the ground. Okay. So here is my low F now. And even though This is about a meter long. It only weighs 120 grams, which really helps when you have something this long and awkward uh, sticking up on top of the instrument. And the, the fact that it's such a light construction means that if someone were to grab this, it would the extension itself would just crumble and crack rather than putting stress on the bell, which is what I want. I can print more extensions easily. Making a new bell, bell assembly is hard. Okay, so... Uh, if you've seen the earlier video, you, knew, you know that I went one half step lower down to E0.
and here it's actually off the monitor. Um, and believe it or not, I did uh, use this in performance. Not a serious performance, mind you. I use this in contraband, which if you've ever been to IDRS, you know that um, uh, the contrabassoons get together and they play in this mass ensemble. Um, so here I am with my low E extension. Um, and I love this picture because, so this is uh, Louis Lipnick. He's the, the contrabassoonist with the National Symphony. Um, and he is taking a picture in amusement. Uh, Richard Meek is over here. He's the bassoon professor at Texas Tech. Uh, he, he looks a little befuddled at what's going on here. Uh, kind of behind the extension is Mark Ortwein, uh, who plays uh, contrabassoonist with the Indianapolis Symphony. Uh, and here we have Richard Murray, who, great guy, but in this picture it looks like he's just trying to avoid eye contact at any, at any, uh, uh, or it looks like he's trying to avoid eye contact. So I thought this was a funny picture. And then here is a, another view of the low E extension. Now, I know I'm gonna disappoint a lot of you all right now when I say that I don't have a low E extension at the moment to go along with uh, the rest of the extensions I've showed you. Um, and the truth is that low F Honestly, low anything, everything below low G, you can really feel the contrabassoon read. It it doesn't. They it doesn't respond as well, and by the time you get to low E, it's it's difficult to get it to respond at all. So, for now, I'm content with the knowledge that if I ever needed to print a low E extension. I could just make this one another, I don't know, 600 millimeters longer, and I could get a low E if I needed it. But for now, sadly, the low E is not in my um, repertoire. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover. If you have any questions that you've been holding on to, um, now would be the, the the, the time, and I'll kind of wait a little bit for chat to catch up. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, one of the main reasons why I needed to get my low F extension ready to go um, is because I have a piece uh, that I'm working on recording that requires it. Uh, Connor, you are in the audience. So Connor wrote a piece for unaccompanied contrabassoon that in addition to having some wonderful high notes has a nice fat low F in it. So looking forward to recording that. Uh, so Brett wants to know if he can start writing these notes. Um, if he's content with me being the only one that plays them, sure. Um, but if you're handing it to publishers for other people to play, I, I'd hold off a, a little while. Um, low A is actually pretty... I consider low A absolutely fine to use as a composer as long as you provide an alternative for players that either don't have an extension or don't have the the uh, the extended range. Yeah, so I consider um, uh, low A usually okay. Anything below that, you're, you're getting into the realm where you're likely to, to run into difficulty. 
and to have it reflect negatively on the piece, uh, even even if you understand how uncommon it is. And of course, I'm saying this more for the benefit of everyone else. Obviously, Brett knows all of this. Um, but um, yeah, I would limit it to low A unless you're writing a solo for someone crazy to play. Okay, uh, what happens when you use the subcontrabassoon read with the extension? So since the last stream, I have found the prototype subcontrabassoon read. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Of course, it's not necessarily a good sub-contrabassoon read. It definitely respond, or it feels more, it feels more substantial. Like, I suspect that there's more actual fundamental in that spectrum. Um, the read itself is not terribly good. Uh, so Cody, uh, I have a Prusa Mark III S um, as my uh, 3D printer. Um, so not, not super crazy, but also not super cheap. Does it play? Uh, uh, Archibald, if you check out the last stream, uh, I that would the entire stream was about uh, the subcontrabassoon progress. Um, can the bell for the low G extension fit in the low F? Um, no, because the um, first of all, the extension's too. Um, too big. Uh, second of all, it's not structurally sound enough to support a thick walled bell. Uh, would you make an extension for Sarusophone? I have made a extension for Sarusophone. Uh, I made a, a low C extension. Uh, that's concert C, so uh, written A. Or if you're thinking about it as an E flat transposing instrument, and I even made a or used a low G extension kind of for fun in one of my uh, Sarusophone uh, etude videos. Sorry about the technical problems for anyone who's still here. Um, obviously, I have a lot of work to do on streaming. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, uh, Connor, I'm not any more questions. Thank you all so much for being here. Sorry about the technical problems.